with Gorilla Wire TV. It's people sharing their thoughts, their insight, their opinions, and their voice. Hello, GorillaWire.com. Jenny here. I'm here with the director and writer of the Boondock Saints and soon to be released Boondock Saints sequel and one of the stars, Sean Patrick Flannery. Um, I just wanted to kind of give everybody in internet land a little overview. I know the first film was based sort of on your experiences, seeing some pretty nasty stuff on violence and whatnot. What was your sort of inspiration for, for the second film? Writing a sequel, so it's, it's a lot like writing a... Uh writing a screenplay with, with your hands tied behind your back. I mean, there's just so many, there were so many fans of the first one, and these, these people, I think Sean will agree, know every single frame of this movie. They, yeah. they know it more than we do. I mean, Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So writing that, writing the sequel was a lot like, you know, you, you can't ever tread on any, it, it, it limits your creativity, but also expands it in a lot of ways. And a lot of things uh, are sacred, you know. Exactly. You can't tread on any sacred ground for fans, or immediately you lose them. So we had to do two things. Write the, write the uh, script in terms of uh, bringing on a new story, but also not tread on any of the you know, sacrosanct places that the fans from the first movie know. So I figured to myself, I'm just going to make this for Boondock fans. If I keep it like that, then I, I'm, I'm safe. Right. Uh, but I also did a lot of research on sequels, and I found that there's, there's this, there's maybe a handful of sequels, we all know what they are, that really do well, you know, that that are as good, if not better, than the first one. You got uh, Terminator 2, you got uh, Godfather 2, yeah. Rocky 2, Wait, Gandhi 2, Gandhi 2. <laughs> um, but it's like the, two. the ones that <laughs> the ones that uh, really do well are the ones that throw a curveball at the fans. I've found easiest example is Terminator 2. Suddenly he's a good guy that protects Sarah Connor, right? right. Fans didn't expect that, and they loved it. Mm -hmm. So I knew that we needed to. To, to take that one aspect and throw some curveballs at the fans in terms of the story. New things, like the new cool thing you're going to like. Um, uh, and, and so that's kind of the way that I wrote it. I, I wrote it. Boy, that was a really long explanation. Sean, you got anything to say about that? How, how was the writing process for you? Uh, it was pretty amazing. I Once mean, I wrote it, when again, you read it, what did you think? Well, I thought, you know, I'd have wrote it. <laughs> Pretty close to that way, but I'd extracted a lot of the queer. Taking out a lot of the queer? Yeah, That's the too bad. Sexuality. All right, so Boondock 2, Boon 2 coming at you slightly queer. You're going to like it, though. That's what I'd have done, but mine have just moved, but... I'm doing my job for me over here. Um, Sean, I guess, I, I guess to sort of expand on that, uh, being an actor and what, what kind of... What was it like going back to the character after so much time? What for you changed? And, what, and how did that affect the performance? Um, you know, I'm 10 years older. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the script, it, it's, it's chronologically correct. So, you know, the characters are 10 years older. So it's not like, you know, I got to go and pretend I'm, you know, Danny Zuko in, in, in high school <laughs> when I'm 38. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so the characters are true. And, uh, you know, it's not, uh, I'm not one of those method actors that, uh, okay, I got to go live in Ireland for six months so that I can play this character. It's, you know. Um, Although that would have been really cool. It would Because I would have been there, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Rifling through the ladies. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I mean, it, it, it's, like a, it's like a perfectly fit glove. You know, you just slide right back into it. I, but, I mean, it doesn't hurt the fact that I dig everybody on the show. You know, I, me and Norman get along well. And that's pretty unheard of as far as actors go. I mean, he's like he's like a brother to me, man. I mean, I mean, I would hang with this cat in work, out of work. Same thing with Troy. I mean, these are cats that I would actually hang out with. Like, I totally wouldn't hang out with him though. Yeah, I, it, it's 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 unidirectional, but I'm okay with that, you know. Um, but you know that that's not that, that can't be said on a lot of movies. You know, a lot of movies you meet somebody, they're the director, you lose touch with them, or you know. But uh, this is, it's like everybody's family. I mean, I, I've stayed in contact with pretty much everybody on the film. I feel like I'm wicked lucky because I've only done two movies and the, the, both Boondock and they're both with the same guys and like there's never been any of that the stuff you hear. I hear horror stories from my other friends who direct that I can't believe that they can continue to yeah. in this business with when, it, when it's like that. I've been like, on films with people like that. You know, yeah, so. walking off the, you know, weird stuff happens with this. I think that like between myself, Rocco, Sean, Norm, and Billy, uh, somehow, some way, that that tone is set, and everybody just goes and has a ball because yeah. nobody's uh, nobody's really like you know looking at you and going, oh yeah. man, your makeup's yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I mean, once everybody on the set is like, oh, we're having fun, 
Oh, okay. I thought we were pretentious people. <laughs> oh, okay, we're having fun. Okay, rock on. Yeah, you know, I mean, so everybody has a good time. So, you know, I mean, even on the day, not to mention the finished product, you know, you always want the final product to be something that, you know, you're very proud of and that, that obviously economically does a lot of business, but you also want to have a good time on the day. And that was three right. months that I'd do it again in a heartbeat, man. On the end product, you want it seething with Stella Epic epicness. Epic. All right, music, guys. Ah, music was a huge part of, especially for you, being a musician. I don't know, are you musically inclined? Yes. Okay, well, there you go. But, um, I know the soundtrack was a lot of people's favorite, a major favorite part of the film. So how is music playing a big part in this film? Same way as it did in the first one. We, I think that uh, one of the, the, the reasons it, it went so well was because of our composer, Jeff Dana, an extremely talented guy. And he basically... I said I want uh, you know I want the feel of the I want some good old Irish music in there. I want some electric techno stuff when they're doing their gigs, and uh, I want some kind of choral score that sort of fuses those two things together. And he was able to to kind of create that mood with the score in a lot of in a lot of ways, and with certain musical selections that he made. This time, I mean, I, I just came from uh, L.A. Uh, yesterday, and he was in the editing room with me. He's watching as we go, and we're talking about the feel of each scene. We're getting far deeper into it than we did the first time around. So basically, he's going to take what he, just like I do with the script, and he does with his, with his character, it's you're going to take what you did last time, respect it, and then add to it and give the fans something brand new that they're going to like that is based on that, you know? So like, if anybody that's worried about us suddenly, you know, going Kentucky bluegrass out of nowhere on the thing. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We're going to we're going to push what we've done that one step further in the music of it all. Yeah. And to be honest with you, but there's a bunch of bands now that are that are successful acts who are huge fans of the Saints yeah. that are going to be helping us out with 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 music. So that's, cool. that's kind of nice. Yeah. That is cool. Um any just to close you guys up is were there any antics or anything that you guys had that you no. divulge now? No. Have fun? No antics. Absolutely not. Everyone was completely concentrated on the task this at hand. This sequel was antic free. Yes. No practical jokes. They were shunned. Man. Shunned, if you will. Although I will say that upon wrap, I presented Troy Duffy with a dozen donuts. A week later, in the mail, he received a Polaroid with a donut around my erect Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> I'm not to say if one of them that he ingested was actually wrapped around the Jimmy Johnson, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Um, thanks so much, guys. Sean, Troy, Go check it out. Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Thank you, John.